Marnen! Marnen! Welcome to the India Explained podcast, recorded in London and San Francisco. One take, unscripted, no rehearsal. Hey, Bhante. Welcome back. Welcome back to our listeners also. So, Bhante, uh, you know, as we were discussing in the brief conversation we had before we uh, plan our uh, episodes for the week, uh, the other story we'll do today, one of the stories we'll do today is really this concerted right-wing troll attack on Sushma Swaraj. Long story right. short, what happened is that uh, Sushma Swaraj, uh, while she was abroad, uh, you know, she's known for addressing problems that people have in the sort of realm of, uh, uh, you know, her expertise uh, on Twitter. Uh, an Indian lady, Hindu, married to a Muslim, I think needed to get a passport issued or renewed. And uh, the passport officer, Vikas Mishra, made a remark about, you know, why she as a Hindu woman was married to a Muslim man and, and you know, made some comments along those lines. She raised it with Sushma Swaraj. The guy, the issue was solved. The passports were issued. The guy was ticked off. He was suspended and uh, I think I believe transferred to Gorakhpur. Now, despite Yogi Adityanath claiming that Gorakhpur is, you know, uh, Switzerland and Monaco and the most beautiful place in the world. Uh, if you're in Lucknow, uh, Gorakhpur is kind of a punishment posting. Uh, <laughs> all hell broke loose. The right-wing trolls just descended on her saying that, you know, here she was someone who was a Muslim defending love jihad. Uh, she was anti-Hindu. She's had a kidney transplant. Someone accused her of having an Islamic kidney, whatever that means. And there have been a number of articles written already, one by uh, journalist Swa- Swati Chaturvedi, who's incredibly well-connected and, you know, really has a lot of aims in the BJP as well. Uh, she made the very cogent point that Modi has not criticized many of these people. Many of these people are followed by Modi. They make rape threats, death threats routinely. Uh, So this raises a number of questions. One is that has the BJP created a monster which will turn against it? Second is this troll army, whether it's the BJP IT cell army or volunteers, a pro-Modi army, more than a pro-BJP army. And the third, maybe it's a hardcore Hindutva, uh, you know, kind of uh, fanatical core base that uh, will, you know, push comes to shove, not even spare Modi? Well, look, I think uh, one of the things to call out here is I think, you know, whether we agree with the politics of Sushma Swaraj or not, uh, she has done, she has intervened in a numerous number of cases where Indian citizens abroad have gone into, have faced difficulty. Uh, and in, in this instance, it's sli- a slight sidestep to that. She's uh, intervened and sorted out a passport uh, uh, passport office tamasha. Uh, uh, so for which I think, uh, say, respect uh, where respect is due. If, if she's acted to benefit an Indian citizen uh, who was abroad or on some passport matter, that's great. Uh, but I think the sad thing in all of this is suddenly you, re- you realize that how this country, our country is changing and how it has changed in the last five years, mm-hmm. that a man occupying public, public office mm. uh, has no shame or no hesitance in interfering and pontificating on a citizen's private matter mm. of a partner choice or practice of faith. Because as far as I know, the last when I checked, mm. uh, Constitution was secular. However ill-defined and malformed that secularism is, mm. it still remains that you know, public in the dispensation of state um, uh, aid or in a, you know facilitation in any matter, mm. uh, your faith should come to play. So this guy, he's rightly been sent to Gorakhpur, and I think he should be uh, sent to somewhere worse. Mm. Like you know, we need to find out some place worse than Gorakhpur, totally. which will be tricky. And I, with apologies to good people of <coughs> Gorakhpur. I think we've done some stories in Gorakhpur. Uh, I, I can't remember. Anyway, so this this thing, this our public culture shifting is um, is 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 of concern. Um, but uh, the other thing about the troll army, there is going to be there's going to be some commentary saying that now look, you've you've kind of nurtured a snake now that's turning on you, uh, as in it's a the 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 BJP uh, troll machinery. Uh, turning on Shushma Swaraj, uh, and there's not much the PMO can do because he t- uh, tacitly supports these things. Uh, I just think these whole army people are uh, like they have nothing better to do. 
uh, and uh, they, I think Guardian reported something that they can't even spell correctly or they repeat misspelling in typos on repeated mm-hmm. trolls. So it's it's not a very sophisticated operation. It's a very dehati number. And, well, uh, but, you know, they do what they need to do. And the best thing to do is to kind of move on. And I'm, I'm genuinely sad for Shushma Swaraj on this occasion that she steps in and does something constructive uh, in keeping with the secular spirit of our nation. And uh, she's getting hassled and, and this um, this lady is getting hassled. So I'm going to complicate things a little bit. You're right. I'm sort of in agreement with pretty much all you say. First, I'll say that this sentiment, the opposition to interreligious marriage in general, that kind of communalism at the level of the relationship, which is guaranteed by the Indian constitution, opposition to that has been, is not new, right? Um, so years ago, 2005 now, 13 years ago when I was in yeah. grad school, I, I actually did a study it was a Ford Foundation funded study and I co-authored a study on interreligious marriage between uh, Muslim and non-Muslim couples. Mostly they were Muslim and Hindu in, in Mumbai. Uh, and, you know, the stories that people came up with, they were just heartbreaking. Uh, you know, the kind of opposition faced by families, the public opposition. And I don't think one religion was more to blame than another. But you're absolutely right in saying that, you know, people who are in the state who are supposed to be secular, this is none of their damn business. They comment on this stuff all the time. And uh, I remember once, a la- you know, a Hindu yeah. lady who was married, one of the anecdotes, a Hindu lady who was married to a Muslim man, <coughs> excuse me, uh, she said that, you know, she was just livid because this, uh, she, I think, was coming back from a from a trip overseas and the guy opens her passport and I think she was traveling alone and, you know, the husband's name is there, he's a Muslim and he says, kya dekha apne? right, like, what did you see in this Muslim? I mean, so, you know, that there's been this sort of ugly streak in us. Uh, even in, in, you know, representatives of the state who are meant to be secular. But of course, things have just exponentially amplified. Uh, now, you know, the, this very interesting thing here about the composition of the BJP troll army. Now, I think there is there is a BJP IT cell. It has very sophisticated equipment. And uh, Swati's article mentioned that, you know, earlier Modi used to call them twice a day in the lead up to 2014. And now he calls them once a day at least, but Amit Shah and someone else, you know, addresses them. Uh, and these are the rank and file guys. And, you know, you might sort of get the crude, uh, you know, expressions and the poor spelling there, which I mean, there is a class dimension to it. One doesn't want to be snobbish, but I think it is a kind of reflection of also in some ways, the fact that these are, you know, young men, mostly from a uh, socioeconomic background where there hasn't been much opportunity. And that combined with a kind of, you know, I, sort of you, you project your hatred onto secularism as being, or the Nehru's or the elites as being those who deprived you of your chance. Modi is your savior and this is how it's expressed. There is also, however, a section of volunteers who say the vilest things. And these are people, however, who are well-educated, chartered accountants, engineers, lawyers, doctors. But they also engage in the filthiest kind of <coughs> attacks online. And some of them may be more articulate than others. Uh, one tangential point to make, because, you know, all of this is kind of the book that I'm just finishing up the draft for right now, uh, is that, uh, you know, someone mentioned that do they sometimes misspell names purposely to uh, protect themselves from, you know, legal uh, cases? Uh, I think that's a bit of a stretch, but it's an interesting point, yeah. because the thing is, everyone knows that these guys have the blessings of the PMO. Twitter India, Facebook India, you know, they, they all ultimately dance to the government's bidding. Once you have the protection of the PMO, nobody is going to like file a case against you or nothing's going to happen if an FIR is filed. So it's it's a very ugly situation and a very depressing situation in many ways all around. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. I mean, look, look, this is going to be a complicated story. And I think our sound quality has been drifting in and out. Rohit, so I'm mindful that maybe the Internet is acting up. So, look, we've, we've wanted to pick up this story. We have addressed the story. Probably we will come back to this in another time. I think the moot points that we were making is that uh, it, it, it is a sad state of affair that public offices providing services to citizens uh, have to ask uh, and query um, on matters of faith. This wouldn't have happened before. Sadly, it is happening now, and that is a sad state of affairs. On that note, it's all from me. Over to you. Okay. Yeah, I think I don't have much more to add. I mean, we've, you know, we've come back to this many times. It's a topic I've written extensively on. You know, the truth, the truth is out there for everyone to see. But I think my only hope is that, <clears throat> sorry, there are enough people who bought into the Modi development Kool-Aid who now see that this is what the Modi project was about. 
in its naked, most naked, in its most ugly, and in some ways its most honest form. And that, uh, you know, that this will factor into the decision they make when it comes to the 2019 elections. So I think on that note, we can wrap this up, okay? Uh, all right, ma'am, take care. So take care, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to us, Rohit and uh, Bunty would like to sign off. Uh, Please stay tuned. Follow us on India Explained on Twitter. Keep listening. Thank you for all your support.